Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. Connecting your brain to computers to improve your memory, treat neuro diseases, and help you keep up with AI, that's what Elon Musk plans to do with his latest business venture, Neuralink. In this edition, we tell you everything you need to know about so-called Neuralace technology. And in Test24, we'll test NEOs by French startup Arabelle Technologies, the world's first portable and universal digital nose that can identify 300 different smells. And as you'll see, it has multiple applications. But first, how close are we to flying to the supermarket? The answer is much closer than you think. For decades now, engineers have tried to develop flying cars. They were possible technically, but were always too expensive and not suited because of the space required to take off and landing. Today, cars with wings that unfold for flight are becoming a reality, as Sanam Chantier explains. It looks like the stuff of science fiction, but your dream of speeding along the clouds in a vehicle could soon become a reality. Aeromobile is a flying car that can reach altitudes of up to 2,000 meters, and the prototype tests were carried out successfully. Another mode of sky transport is the Switchblade. The Oregon-based company that manufactures the flying motorcycle says it will be testing it this summer. In these workshops, the engineers are preparing for future trials. This is the cockpit made of carbon fiber, a light material which enables the machine to only weight 800 kilograms. That's 200 kilograms less than a small-sized car. Not science fiction anymore. We intend to do it so that you can take this to the grocery store, you can take it to the restaurant, and if you want, you can go to the restaurant in the next town. And these are the wings. Each one is three meters long. We're extending the wings now. It's electrically operated. You push the button, the wings swing out. Samsung is the first startup to use this technology, transforming a vehicle that travels along the ground to one that takes to the skies in only two minutes. But it still retains some car-like features. Occupants sit side by side in an enclosed space. The company plans to assemble its first flying car this summer. For now, they're testing the ground elements. The challenge, the wing doesn't get damaged while the car is being driven. You have to be about 70 miles an hour on your takeoff and landings. The uh, most fun is when you press on the accelerator, it really goes. It's very fun to drive. The vehicle was built to drive on the road off-road and even on grass. It will go on the market for 130,000 euros, and so far, 100 people have reserved it. And it's time to welcome Dan and Jay Cattlecar, our in-house expert. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. At the Geneva International Motor Show this month, several car makers unveiled their latest concepts in terms of futuristic travel, and the most promising or the most surprising was perhaps Airbus's pop-up. That's right, Airbus and Ital Design, they presented this concept at Geneva. So the idea is that uh, this concept is essentially a hybrid of a car and a flying machine. At the heart of it is a carbon fiber capsule, which measures 2.5 meters by 1.4 meters and 1.5 meters in width. Uh, so uh, depending on the kind of mode you choose, there will be uh, drone rotors that can attach to this capsule and you go into flying mode, or there's a wheel base which uh, allows this capsule to be in a, in a car uh, form. So this is the idea. Now, what uh, Airbus and Ital Design, they are proposing, it's part of a wider vision. Uh, the actual machine may not be an exact replica of this concept, but the wider vision is that you will be able to, uh, say, book this pop-up uh, car, or whatever you want to call it, the hybrid, using just an application. So by choosing an application, through the application, you choose the pop-up, and the application will then suggest whether you should take the road or whether you should be in the flying mode. So that is very interesting. So that will save a lot of time. Uh, Airbus plans to uh, test one of these concepts, a prototype, not exactly a replica, but one of the prototypes at the end of uh, 2017. And now what about Ehong? It also unveiled its own concept. 
That's right. It was in early 2016 that this Chinese company, they created a stir by announcing a drone that is, uh, that will be capable of carrying a single passenger. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it will be able to fly on its own. So it is all, all the artificial intelligence and all the systems. And it will be able to do so for 23 minutes. So a single flight will last for 23 minutes. Very well. Thank you, Dan. You're going to stay with us because we're going to be talking now about Elon Musk's latest venture called Neuralink Corp. Its aim, linking brains to computers by using implants. The company says by doing so, it can treat neuro diseases. And one day, these tiny little electrodes will be powerful enough to maybe upload uh, memories and ideas in our brain. How does that work? Well, the idea seems to be to build a seamless symbiotic uh, mesh of electrodes that can be implanted in our brains. Now, as time passes, this elect these electrodes or this network will uh, then interact with our own neural network. And through the combination of the two, we'll be able to augment our powers of cognition, we'll be able to have more memory, and in general, we'll be able to communicate in a much better way. So this is, it is the symbiotic relationship that seems to be the main objective of uh, this company. And now, uh, Elon Musk actually uh, announced this launch in, in a tweet, in a tweet in which he says he worries about the quote-unquote existential threat AI is posing to humans. What does that mean? If we don't merge with mach machines, we're going to go extinct? Well, who knows? Perhaps in the distant future, this could become a reality, and we might need to keep ourselves up to the rapid progress that artificial intelligence machines will be making. But as of now, uh, there's not such danger uh, if you talk about uh, the present. But artificial intelligence, it is slowly entering many spheres of our life. For example, uh, in Internet of Things, for in connected objects that we might end up using on a day-to-day -day basis in our homes, there's artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence plays a role in the way we decide to watch videos, for example, on YouTube or even in social networks, there's artificial intelligence. There's also artificial intelligence in self-driving cars. So it is coming in, slowly right. coming into our lives. So maybe it's a way of keeping up with artificial, because as you see, AI has many advantages, you know, tremendous computing power, massive storage. So in order to compete with it, maybe we'll have to mimic artificial intelligence. You know, artificial intelligence is a set of techniques that mimics human intelligence. Right. So maybe in the future, it could be the other way around. We'll have to see with that. But tell us more about other companies in the same sector that are up and running right now. Yeah, there are many startups that are using these techniques of the brain-computer interface, and one of them is the Boston-based Neurable, which is using uh, the you know EEG electroencephalography, uh, which basically detects the electrical activity in the brain. That's so, what doctors use. Exactly. Right. So what they're doing is they're interpreting some of these signals, and they have developed some technologies which enable them to have a hands-free uh, control Control. For example, when you're using virtual reality or in augmented reality or in virtual reality, you have to choose from the menu or choose from the options. So that is the first stage that uh, uh, Neurable is uh, targeting now. And there's another company called Halo Neuroscience, which has uh, developed a headset, uh, which essentially it stimulates the, the motor cortex part of the brain uh, by using a special foam. And because of this stimulation, apparently the company claims that there's a better or optimization of uh, the uh, brain and the muscles. So it, it leads to better training and, I don't know, for athletes uh, especially. Very well. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test24. So, Dan, today you have a digital nose that's capable of recognizing and measuring pretty much any odor. How does it work? The, this digital nose called NEOS is made by Aribal Technologies. It's a startup based in Grenoble in France. So essentially, it works by using a smartphone. This device has its own Wi-Fi. You connect the smartphone to the, uh, the device Wi-Fi. And then here, as you, uh, through the application, you get a number of uh, options. And for example, now I have two bottles. One is okay. of lemon juice, and the other is of coffee. So I'm going to try to find if this device is able to detect the smell or not. Now, before doing that, uh, let me explain you the process. So what happens is this, uh, this Straw, yeah, inlet, it essentially it captures the molecules of that uh, product. And the molecules then enter this device. And there's, uh, uh, there are some sensors. There are 44 sensors uh, which detect smell. And they associate the smell to a peculiar uh, product. 
So, but that's not the only part. So this is the biochemistry in terms of smelling. And then there is the optic uh, technology as well. So these sensors are placed on a prism and there's a light source underneath which, uh, which shoots uh, lights in the prism. And these sensors, the layer of sensor, it generates a peculiar pattern. And this pattern is associated, a specific pattern is associated with every molecule. So that's how you detect which molecule is present. Now they have a database of almost 300 uh, different molecules, but these are all pure molecules. So they are able to, once you pry it out, it is then analyzed and then matched with the database. And then you get the desired result in terms okay. of the name of the molecule and in terms of intensity as well. So we'll just uh, do a small experiment here. So you, Place the bottle here and you press. And, and tell us more about its applications while, while you're testing it. I mean, I'm sure some of our viewers are asking themselves, what do you use a digital nose for? Well, there are multiple applications. For example, in the food industry, you can uh, determine the hygiene of the ingredients, the quality of the ingredients by uh, knowing its smell, by analyzing the smell, the odor, for example. It can also be used to combat uh, pollution. So by determining the presence of, say, methane or ammonia, you can take steps accordingly. And in the field of medicine, there are multiple applications as well. So for example, now here you can see the result is out. It says lemon, right. citrus. So it is able to detect the presence of lemon juice in this bottle. And you mentioned the, the applications in the medical field. The company says it can now, it's going to be able to sniff out diseases. What does that mean? Well, just to give you an example, a week or so ago, the Curie Institute, they announced the result of a major project in which two German shepherds were able to smell the presence of uh, breast cancer. So that is something that uh, perhaps the company is trying to uh, replicate in a device. Well, that would be great. It would be a great advancement in medicine. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it. And do stay with us here on France 24.